Hello and welcome to 28th lecture of course on data enabled tribological engineering from experiments to predictive model. Topic of this lecture is data driven models for lubricant optimization. We have already learned something like a data driven models or we can use a regression model using ANM. Question comes do we have a data? Second thing is that how do we go with the lubricant optimization? What is the objective functions? What are the constraints and what are the restrictions? So, we will be exploring this lecture about those aspects and uh, let me start with uh, whatever knowledge we gained from previous lectures because whenever we go for optimization we really require a domain knowledge. If we do not have a domain knowledge optimization is not going to be useful at all. Every surface will have a roughness at a microscopic or atomic level. Now, because of the surface roughness there will be asperities and when we try to slide one interface or one surface over another there will be interlocking and there will be generation of the friction and this friction generation can be related to adhesion or abrasion. It will cause a degradation of the surface. Now, to mitigate the surface degradation we really require a lubricant layer in a contact area and this was covered in lecture 1 at the beginning of the course. How did we define the lubricant? We say lubricant is a substance to control friction. I am using the word control the friction, we are not using the word minimization of the friction, sometimes we really require a friction. So, we are trying to control the friction, but we will try to reduce the wear because we do not want a wear and we know the wear is a cause of the surface degradation. So, we want as low as possible. So, reduced wear between surfaces in a contact when they are moving under relative motion. So, this is what we have defined at the beginning of the course. Then we say how do we go with the lubricant classification? We can classify a lubricant as a liquid lubricant, it can be oil, it can be water. We can classify this as a solid lubricant, soft solid which have a low shear strength or we can use a solid lubricant like a graphite, graphene, molybdenum disulfide and many more. We can use a gaseous lubricant which will be useful for high speed application or we can use a semi solid greases which will be very useful also. So, we will be covering something about liquid and grease in this present lecture also. However, in lecture 6 we give a little more uh, demand for the liquid lubricant. We say liquid lubricant are superior in removing the wear generated debris. So, if you want to keep ultra wear in ultra wear domain we really require a liquid lubricant to remove the wear debris and also we say try to say that uh, heat also will be carried away by the liquid lubricant. So, if you do not want a temperature rise this liquid lubricant will be preferable compared to other lubricant. Further we classify liquid lubricant in come categories we say synthetic lubricant. Of course, the synthetic lubricants are very costly that is why we use the word it should be utilized in extreme condition or as a specialized lubricant. It can be mineral oil and now there is a more trend about the biodegradable oils. However, we know very well that 85 to 90 percent oils which are in a present usage belong to the mineral oil category or mineral lubricant category. We also explain uh, something like a selection of the lubricant can be based on what is a relative speed and what is a load. We say very high load but a low speed will prefer the solid lubricant. Now, intermediate load and intermediate speed will have a grease coming to almost negligible load but very high speed we will go with the gases lubricant and in between also we will try to figure out what will whether we use a low viscosity oil or high viscosity oil. However, in these days we say all viscosity may not be sufficient criteria. So, we really require additives and this additives can be 5 to 15 percent can be added and sometimes we have realized also when we are adding additive 0 0.1 percent, 0 0.2 percent performances change significantly. So, there is a special weightage for the additives and we need to select appropriate additive. We also learned something in our lecture 6, how do we go hard with the designing a lubricant. We say designing a lubricant first thing is that you choose a base oil 
and you choose additive package. Base oil, uh, there are uh, already said mentioned the synthetic oil and mineral oil or vegetable oil. However, coming to the additives, we do have a friction modifier. If our emphasis is only on the friction, we can use the friction modifiers. There are number of uh, friction modifiers. Some extend a graphite, molybdenum disulfide, tungsten disulfide. Coming to the anti-wear additives, again we have a very big range of anti-wear additives. What is the purpose of anti-wear additives? To provide a protective layer on the surface without harming the surface significantly. And uh, one was the uh, EP additives, when uh, major purpose is uh, to avoid the seizure, avoid the cold junction formation, particularly useful when the load is very high. And that was covered in lecture 8, we see EPA lubricants are inorganic uh, molecules that operate at elevated temperature and pressure to provide excellent protection against the adhesive welting. We also learn that EP additives are going to harm environment with this chloride, with the sulfur, with phosphorus and as far as possible should not be utilized. If it is, then we need to keep minimum criteria, we say that lesser than certain criteria only EP additives can be added. We cannot think only from a load carrying capacity point of view, we cannot think only from additive point of view, here environmental issues will be major issues. So, we need to think from that angle. However, we also require corrosion inhibitors, particularly humid environment create a corrosion or rusting and we need to protect surfaces from a water. In addition, there will be some sort of a chemical additive substance, maybe uh, SO2 or uh, some sort of acids are available, then it will clearly create a some sort of corrosion. We also learn something like a viscosity improver. We have additives to improve the viscosity index. What is the meaning of viscosity index? That means temperature related viscosity decrease will be lesser. So, that is why we say minimize decrease in a lubricant viscosity at a high temperature. So, it will be a function of temperature and we do not want to uh, decrease the viscosity or we say that maybe viscosity should remain stable that will be more preferable. We also learn something about the grease and here we are saying the grease is the better. Earlier lecture 6 we say that liquid lubricant is better and here we are saying the grease will be better. Now, there are different situations. So, whenever we go for optimization, objectives should be very clear what we want to do. Now, why the grease will be better? Because we need to talk about uh, some sort of energy loss. We, if we talk only from a friction point of view, grease may not be acceptable. But when we say the pumping also, because liquid lubricant requires a pumping action. And particularly when the shafts are vertical or inclined, we need to move liquid. And because of that pumping losses, overall possibility is that energy loss in the liquid lubricant may be on higher side compared to the grease. Why? The reason being the grease can be firmly adhered to the surface at application point. Liquid will move away, but grease will remain there. So, it will also cause a reduction in friction. So, it is avoiding the pumping losses. Thus, in short, we say if overall energy losses with liquid lubricants on our higher side, I will prefer to go ahead with the grease lubrication. It has other advantages also. One thing is that it does not really require frequent reapplication and then it also acts as a like a sealing against the contamination. We can use a corrosion uh, inhibitors, it will resist the water, it will not water will not reach to the surface and many times it can avoid the mitigation of the oil vapor. So, oil will be trapped in a thickness. It can extend the life of the worn component. How? I have showed this one. If the co uh, component is worn out, there is a pit over here. If a grease is filled in that, it will cause a lesser damage. Not only the lesser damage, it will also provide a some sort of cushioning against the shock loading, against the reverse operation, low speed and high load. So, overall if you are our more emphasis is to reduce the noise and vibration level as well as a reduce energy loss, I will go with a grease that grease will be better option. So, this kind of domain knowledge is very essential before moving to the optimization. 
So, if we directly go to mathematical model without understanding the parameters importance, it will not be able to give a good kind of a optimization. Let us then uh, think about uh, coefficient of friction. We also said that coefficient of friction is a function of what will be the friction of the liquid surface and at the metal surface or we can also say boundary lubrication. So, this was also explained in earlier lecture. Here what we are saying SL is a shear strength of lubricant layer, SM is a uh, shear strength of the metal which are softer material in a, uh, in a contact, PM is a basically a hardness of the softer material. Alpha is a proportion that true area of contact uh, is getting supported by liquid. That means, it is important to understand if there is a more and more metal contact and we know very well the shear strength of metals will be on a higher side, much much higher side compared to liquid lubricant, functional friction will be on a higher side. So, if we are able to utilize this model, that is one good thing, but how will we utilize this model? We do not know alpha, that can be data driven. That means, if I assume initially some fraction, and if I have a thousand thousand data, I can correct this model and that will turn out to be a data driven model that will give more appropriate results. But initially we need to provide some sort of model which need to get corrected if we have more number of data. And that will also help us to predict the lubricant regime because alpha on a higher side almost reaching to 1 means it is a hydrodynamic lubrication. If it is alpha is coming to the 0, we know it is a metal to metal contact. And then uh, if it is somewhere in between, we can say it is a mixed lubrication. So, here the initial model we provide and based on the uh, data we have, which we collect through experiment or from literature, we trade and we figure out yeah, whether it is a lubrication regime, is a hydrodynamic lubrication, boundary lubrication, mixed lubrication or any other kind of lubrication. We also learned something like a hydrodynamic equation which was proposed by Reynolds which was basically purpose was to figure out how the parameters are related with each other. So, this equation itself is a kind of a partial differential equation which can be uh, solved and provide a good classical solution. This also can be modified with a suitable uh, data or data driven approach can be utilized for this kind of equation to get a better and better results. Another one uh, we learn that if we are uh, using this equation, that means, we are assuming that there is a hydrodynamic lubrication, there is no mixed lubrication. However, many times uh, whether we should use this equation or not, we utilize a specific film thickness formula which says H minimum divided by uh, composite surface roughness. Now, this composite surface roughness if it is on hard side, naturally that uh, specific film thickness will be lesser. I mean often we say if hydrodynamic film thickness or formula needs to be utilized it can be greater than 5 in some books is greater than 10. If we know the beginning itself and then we are dividing we are able to say that okay whether it will go for hydrodynamic equation or we really require a solution for this kind of equation so that we can go ahead with the better data driven approach. So, if it is in a hydrodynamic region what are the parameters we say viscosity will play major role reason being it will be deciding what will be the film thickness which is separating the two surfaces. Thicker the lubricant, it will be more and more hydrodynamic lubrication. However, we also know if we go for high viscosity, coefficient of friction will be depending on the internal friction. That means, we do not want very high viscosity. Even in hydrodynamic lubrication, we want just sufficient foam thickness which should not cause a very high friction. If it is, because we know the, the stripe curve, coefficient of friction decreases and then increases. So, this is a friction and this is a specific film thickness in this side. So, we say as a specific film thickness increases initially coefficient of friction is decreasing after that is again increasing and we want optimization should be done in this domain. That means, if it is a domain of which we are able to figure out operating region is this one, it will be useful. Otherwise, we need to do some sort of iterations. We also learn something from a ASM handbook and then we say there are several kind of the lubricants and every lubricant we really choose based on the properties. It can be a liquid range, viscosity temperature relation, uh, low temperature flowability, oxidation stability, thermal stability, 
a volatility, anti-rust habit, a boundary lubrication, fire resistance, uh, elastomer swelling, and a cost. These are so many parameters which can be utilized. And there are many kind of the lubricant. We say mineral oil is the one, as I said, 85% to 90% is a mineral oil. We can use a silicon also. We can use a silicate ester or phosphate ester. So these are the very important uh, material. And what is being given here in ASM handbook, they are rating moderate, good, poor, very good. So these have been the ranking has been given or relative performance has been given. Now if I want to choose any liquid lubricant, I can tabulate or maybe convert to the mathematical formula and then choose appropriate lubricant for the different situations. So this is what we are going to learn in this lecture. We say that uh, when we are going for the selection, it will be always preferable to integrate expertization what we are learned in the lubricant technology and what we are learned in machine learning algorithms. So what we say, ideally lubricant having a desirable characteristics, what we have shown in the previous slide, 15 kind of characteristics, we should have all good characteristics, all win-win situation, everything should be as for our favor, but in reality it will not happen. So we will be having some constraint and we need to learn those things. So what we are saying, it should have a desirable characteristics like a low predictable friction. Friction may be low, not a zero but it should be predictable and it should give a reliable results. It should have a heat capacity, very high heat capacity so that the temperature does not increase significantly. It should have a stable viscosity, viscosity temperature relation should be stable. It should have resistance towards the corrosion, should be harmless to the surface that we should not cause any wear to the surface, maintaining the ultra low wear rate. So that is important. Now why we are using uh, ML in this case? because we many times we do not know the relationship between the variables. We have a data, but we do not have a relationship. That is why in previous lecture we discussed about ANN or regression analysis also. So we need to establish a regression formula and we can optimize it. And the relation often is not available in literature related to coarser friction and surface roughness. And we know very well surface roughness plays very, very important role in these days. Reason being, we are moving towards a thin lubrication and thin lubrication surface softness will play important role. And if we are able to really establish coefficient of friction versus uh, surface softness, some sort of rela relation that will be very important or wear rate with the surface softness also will be important to us. So what we want, we want to uncover the lubricant effectiveness even the irregular wear condition often when we use archer equation we you assume there is a regular wear rate but it doesn't happen in actually in circumference 360 degree we find somewhere the wear is very high somewhere wear is low and it is a wear uh, irregular wear and we need to come up with a right equation and that can happen only with when we have many data and we are using the ml one point comes whether we can combine or we can use a tribologist and computer engineer collaboration together. However, we know that it is slightly difficult. Now, ML is becoming an important aspect for every engineering field. So, instead of thinking only from a computer engineer's point of view, even other engineers, it can be even the mechanical engineers, metallurgy engineers, they also need to learn the ML. And if they are able to learn, they will have a subject knowledge and they can optimize in a better manner. So we do not really require only computer engineers. We say we should have a knowledge or all engineers should have a knowledge of ML so that overall results are favorable to them. Now that is why we say lubricant and additive companies do have. Now we are using the word companies who are doing R&D also. They also need to learn ML. They should incorporate the AI models. Why? Reason being they have a lot of secret uh, domain knowledge or secret to nature of the lubricant composition they cannot reveal to the other engineers. So they have to restrict everything in a house only. They cannot reveal outside. When actually when we, they are trying to incorporate some sort of AI model or ML model, the data has to be shared and that is a major problem. Instead of that, better they learn AML or AI and incorporate that will be better option. So what we say uh, lubricant composition remains a proprietary item for the supplier. It will not, so that is why we have a limited access to the uh, data and that is why the ML application should be utilized by them or uh, they should learn 
as a student, as a faculty, we can run in academic institution. But some hypothetical data, we will not have a proper domain knowledge or we say we will have a domain knowledge but not proper data because data may vary and very sophisticated data will be kept on in company. Let me give one explanation for that. We say we are considering the shell company and they use the, some sort of a loop chat and that is a chat bot for the lubricant finding the which is a suitable lubricant. So, this chat bot uh, uh, is been uh, run by the shell company. They provide a technical data and then uh, um, the particularly related to lubricant product and they can answer simple customer queries. If they are not able to, then they are, it, uh, the question will go to the human expert and they will answer. That means questions can be raised by common people and chatbot has been utilized to give answer. If answers are not available and some specialized thing, then it will go to human expert. They will analyze and then give the results to you. So, companies have already started using AI mod. So, I am just showing a one or two slide on that. You can access this uh, website, Shell uh, on the business customer uh, lubricant for the business. And then uh, they are giving a four option. We are saying that uh, info related to loop, what is the right oil for my machine, what the shell alternative is. That means if you are using some other oil, not a shell related oil, and if you are specifying that oil, the quite possible shell company will provide their own product to replace uh, whatever the oil you are defining or describing. And then they also give online the codes. So, this everything is related to AI. Now, if I say info related to the loop, uh, if we do go ahead, they are able to find out 277 related products which they have. Now, if we choose only oil uh, out of their product, what we will get, we will get a number of a list of the oils which they have. Now, if I go ahead with the clicking on each individual oil, what I get, I get a data sheet. Of course, I can get a package size, I can request a quote also. But when you come to the data sheet, data sheet is again in two parts. They say technical data sheet and safety data sheet. Both the things are given. Now, coming to the technical data sheet, what they are using the kinematic viscosity at the 40 degree and 100 degree viscosity index, flash point, total acid number, and uh, rust control after water washing. They are giving also the oxidation control, and of course, they are also mentioning which kind of ASTMA standard they are following. So, this is a knowledge which is already available in an AI mode. We can explore this from a literature and then we, if we want to really make a good model, we can incorporate this kind of feature or data directly from a website and then we learn from that how do we make this kind of uh, optimization software. However, it is only for selection. It is not going to do any innovation or new thing. It will provide which is a suitable. So, let me uh, show the next slide on this. Now, what we say, what is the right oil for my machine and then you give a different kind of machine, it can be automobile, it can be industrial machines. Now, coming to the automobile car, I just give a name of the Suzuki and then Suzuki some model which is runs on a CNG. They are also again giving a data sheet, technical data sheet and safety data sheet. What is the safety data sheet? We say that uh, the when the oil should be replaced that has been given to us. Coming to the uh, industrial one, we can think about the gear oil also and then we can explore about what kind of gear oils they have. So, this is a what we say chatbot window for the search. The attribute is useful as a basically on a AI and they have user data which they have. Whatever they have a products and then the data of each uh, product they have uh, encapsulated and then results are coming out based on that. Similar thing can be done by us or uh, we pick up the literature uh, data and we can choose appropriate lubricant for our purpose. So, this is what we want to discuss in the this lecture. Now, this lubricant selection uh, can be for the open and enclosed gears. It can be for rolling element bearing, plane bearing, linear bearing, chains, screws, compressor, hydraulic system, pumps and followers. So, there are many, many lubricants available and we need to choose. Again, each pair will have a some sort of requirement and each pair will have a some sort of load and speed condition and selection of lubricant will depend many times on input. We cannot say, oh, is it the gear we should use directly grease 
or if it is a pump we directly use a liquid lubricant or a rolling element bearing directly we use a grease. Again in grease we have many many greases also. So, we need to choose a, a appropriate lubricant uh, from our knowledge or uh, from a database we need to really incorporate all those features so that we get a better results. Just to elaborate what I said we will just consider one case study uh, which was this kind of the selection of the lubricant using a combined multiple attribute decision making method which was published in 2012. I am just going to explain few things about this, uh, but you can refer to this paper it has uh, they have explained each and everything properly what they are trying. They are trying to select the lubricant for the machining purpose whatever this application is a different than a machining and uh, they want to choose a lubricant particularly for machining EN31 steel workpiece. So, here we are trying to learn from methodology not necessarily liquid lubricant or which they are going to use which, which kind of methodology should be utilized for the optimization for selection and how do we go ahead. So, they are choosing a uh, suitable lubricant for machining EN31 workpiece with a tungsten carbide insert. So, already they are they are fixing the material we want only this material and tool material is also been fixed so that is a carbide uh, insert and then uh, they are choosing a material uh, lubricant from a some sort of a list of a lubricant which they have. So, what they did they integrated approach uh, Topsys and AHP what is AHP we will be describing later, but Topsys is the optimization technique and then what they are trying to do they possess uh, a solution and they try to give a minimum distance from ideal solution we assume there is a some best solution hypothetical solution they want to come as close as possible and should move away maximum distance as far as possible from a negative ideal solution. So, they are have an ideal solution like a, we want to do a ranking from 1 to 10 and 10 is the optimum solution for us we say we want to reach to 10 and move away from 1. So, this is the way one uh, can think. Uh, so, we if we have a uh, worst solution and a best solution and then we can do a complete formulation based on that. So, that is why we say to find solution that is a both closest to the hypothetical best and farthest from a hypothetical worst and that is a topsis. We do not want to discuss a topsis more in detail in this, but how it has been utilized for the lubricant selection that is what we want to explain. And then uh, naturally we require a variables whenever we go for the optimization of the lubricant we really require of which parameter shall be selected. So, what they selected a chip tool interface temperature and of course, uh, this can be measured cutting force can be measured tool wear can be measured and surface softness also can be measured. So, based on that you can do a ranking of the lubricant uh, which is uh, particularly rank lubricant for the steel turning process and experimental data are available there. So, this is a list which they have provided we say when they are not using any lubricant number one when it is a kind of the coolant or maybe say water content is on the higher side number two third one is a 10 percent graphite uh, kind of particle have been mixed in a uh, SA40 uh, base oil. In uh, fourth number they are using 10 percent of MOS2 that is another anti friction particle, fifth number they are using boric acid 10 percent, sixth number they are using 15 percent graphite, seventh number 15 percent MOS2, eighth number 15 percent boric acid and last one is a base oil that is a SAE 40 base oil. And again I am using that this is the what we are picking from a literature and as I say that there are a four parameter chip tool interface parameter, cutting force parameter, cutting wear parameter, surface softness which have been defined. So, these are the data which we have. Now, how do we utilize optimization and then they have explained everything in a paper whatever that they did a AHP and uh, Topsys they are saying the number one ranking is a fifth number material or uh, fifth number oil which is a 10 percent boric acid it uh, gives the best results. Now, number 2 is a 15 percent boric acid in a SA40 oil. So, here is interesting thing comes when we are mixing 10 percent boric acid as additive then we are getting better result compared to 15 percent that is slightly that question comes even though cost is not been considered still a 15 percent boric acid is not giving as good result as a 10 percent. Another question comes if the 10 percent they have done why not 5 percent. So, if it is increasing trend of the boric acid is showing a lower performance 
it is coming to rank 2 compared to 10 percent boric acid why not we go ahead with the 5 percent. So, this is a word when we do our own we try to start understanding something different and chatbot kind of solution will not be able to give this kind of results to us. Here we can do it or it may be sub subsequently if you use ANN and then you give the input of 5 percent and it should predict what will happen to the 5 percent. Here these results are already available and we say ANN kind of the model we are training of course 10 data or 9 data is not sufficient to train that ANN, but this is kind of a explanation description about that. But if we are able to find ANN model for that or we can want to forecast what will be happening at the, at the 5 percent boric acid are these parameter going to be better compared to the 5, uh, 10 percent that is possibility we can innovate on that. Now, next number third number is coming the 10 percent MOS2, fourth number is again 15 percent MOS2. Here again the reverse trend has been shown, lesser uh, MOS2 is showing a better results compared to higher MOS2. Same trend is has been shown here 10 percent graphite is showing better result compared to 15 percent graphite. So, whenever we are going on higher side of the particle percentage it is showing inferior performance. One more interesting thing what they have shown is something like this. We say SA40 base oil is giving better results compared to 15 percent graphite which is somewhat unjustifiable. If we are using some sort of uh, friction modifier we need to analyze this in the depth why it is happening. Now this is a just a mathematical tools and the difference you look at the 0.445 and 0.4328 which may be even tolerance range itself or we say the kind of uncertainty. So, we may not believe this completely have a number 1 and number 2 there is a substantial difference from number 3 and 4 we can think about and maybe detailed analysis can be done only than boric acid when it is getting mixed with SA40 base oil what will be the performance I can vary next time 1 to 15 percent we can generate a more number of data that will give a better results compared to just believing the 10 percent boric acid is the best. So, this is a kind of initial optimization initial selection or maybe say the first level selection and first level selection shows that 10 percent boric acid is the best, 15 percent boric acid mixed in the SA40 is a second number. So, we can think from that angle however, how do we encode that that is coding we have done. So, we are we are providing PC as a data initially for all FC, TW, RA we are now after that we are doing a normalization reason being the temperature units are different, pores units are different, wear rate units are different, RA values are different. So, we required of uh, optimization uh, uh, with uh, normalization. So, if we do not do a normalization it will not be a good option, it results will not be good. Second they are using AHP and then uh, here they are using the uh, relative ranking which we will be again uh, explaining in the next slides, but what are the overall uh, results and we can do a ranking based on that. So, this ranking and what they have provided is coming more or less similar. So, whatever we have done according it is also matching their results. So, whatever they have described in the paper we have been quoting according to that and slight variation is only in a 6 and 7 number. So, this is uh, what we are saying uh, in the rank 6 we are getting 9 number and then uh, rank 6 7 we are getting 6. Now, however, the units are slightly different here you can look at a 0 0.3912 and they are getting 0 0.4328. Uh, so, there is some sort of variation in values, but overall ranking is coming more or less similar manner. Now, if this method which we have 10 AHP and TOPSIS do we need to learn this method newly or whatever we have learned in chapter 14 that can be utilized because then these both methods look very very similar to each other. In uh, uh, lecture 14 we did a weighted objective method and then I am just bringing back the slide from lecture 14 there we say that you list the required property same thing whatever we need you list down whatever the materials which you have you list down. So, this is a similar thing which we have done. Now, in addition if you want you can go ahead with the what are the additional aspect like a moisture, uh, surface protection, uh, wear rate those are possible and then uh, we say also it uh, we can add a, a criteria that oil should not form a, some sort of a hard deposits 
on a surfaces that's also possible we should also have some sort of resistance against the aging uh, promoting the life cycle so these are the additional parameters can be incorporated so when we are using the digit logic method or weighted object method which we have done we can add more number of parameters so this method was taught uh, earlier in the lecture 14 how do we go with optimization of coating now same method can be also utilized with a some sort of modification which we are going to discuss in this lecture now what did uh, we want to implement the weighted object method same table which uh, they have utilized I and mean, we are bringing from their paper all the four parameters are same what is the parameters chip tool interface temperature cutting force tool wear and surface softness all the parameters are same we are just copying the same thing and uh, tabulating in this manner now when we want to find out the relative weights why i am bringing this example back because uh, ahp is also giving a relative weights and topsis is again to some extent similar kind of method what we have done so what we are saying determine the relative weights of the property by comparing it and then uh, we have a four parameters temperature force wear ra here we are adding the dummy variable because we want a dummy should get zero no other parameter should get a zero so when we are comparing temperature versus uh, uh, the force we are giving more importance to force when we are comparing the temperature versus uh, wear again we are giving more importance to wear it again uh, and when we are comparing the temperature we are uh, giving more importance to the ra value However, from dummy point of view, we give more importance to the temperature. So, this is a way we do and then overall summation of uh, rho, here we are getting 1, here we are getting 3, here we are getting 4 and here we are getting 2. So, these are the weighting factors which should be multiplied uh, and then, uh, with a uh, normalized factor and how did we do uh, normalization uh, in utility, we use uh, utility scores in uh, lecture 14. You see utility score particularly for negative element we want to minimize can be 10 minus this value if it is a positive two, it will be uh, this value will be removed and it will be directly this ratio. So we want uh, minimization of the temperature and we did in this normalization our utility score it comes out to be like this. In this case is very clear that fifth number oil uh, the fifth number oil is giving the best results and then uh, eighth number oil is uh, giving the second best results. So, whatever the topsis has predicted is giving a similar kind of trend. Now, the second parameter is a cutting force. Again, we have utilized the same utility uh, score method, and again, here we are trying to uh, give a ranking. And we find again the fifth number gives the best results, second best result is a 15 number. So, same, same trend has been followed. Whatever we have done in lecture 14, and topsis is also giving a similar kind of a trend. Next one is a tool wear and tool wear again now we have found a utility score we are finding the 8 number is a giving best results. So, here 8.348 is a better than 8.214. So, this is the best and this is the second best. So, there is a some sort of a very close uh, uh, we say that uh, ranking or marks. Last one is a surface softness. In surface softness if you look at again when we are comparing the highest score again comes in this case only the 7.5 and 7.6. So, more or less these two oils are getting better and better ranking compared to any other oil and that is what same thing what we did in a topsis. Then now what only the difference came we did a some sort of relative factor using AHP method here we are using a, a relative method using a digit logic. So, we need to learn what is really the difference when the weight we are giving a digit logic and when we are giving weight with the AHP because I believe the AHP gives a better results but requires a more detailed knowledge. However, whatever the weight we have given we want to find out the results and in our results we say rank 1 has been given lubricant 5, rank 2 has been given to the lubricant 8, rank 3 has been given to lubricant 4, rank 4 has been given to lubricant 7 and whatever that they predicted the same thing number 1 uh, rank is a 5 number lubricant, number 2 is 8 number lubricant, uh, then comes uh, third number rank is a 4th number lubricant, 4th number is a 7 number uh, lubricant. So, this is the same thing, now only the difference is coming in uh, next three. So, why we say the rank 5 is coming to the lubricant, rank 5th number is coming to the lubricant 6, not a third one, so there is a difference, we are getting better score. Uh, we see even the better score if you look at the comparison is very close 
5.6354, so this will come in error domain itself that means this does not have much value or difference that is why we are saying here the, if we apply AHP it may give a better score compared to digital logic because it will create a more difference and how it will be done that will be explained however I at least I am uh, finding this more reliable reason being that um, uh, that is a uh, rank 6 which was getting 9 number oil that is not happening here we are getting rank 7 reason being the graphite which is mixed in the oil is, is still giving the better results. So, first one the first two are the boric acid then MOS2 then a graphite then only the base oil is coming otherwise uh, what they predicted that base oil gives a better result compared to 15 percent graphite which is somewhat not related to the concepts and then why it is coming that need a uh, little more explanation and however when we did our uh, uh, earlier method uh, digit logic method and utility score based method that gives a very good results to us. Now coming to the comparison as I say that we really require a comparison when we are going with a digit logic method where we assign 0 or 1 we do not take much tension we say either it is go or no go if that means I want I do not want. I want that I will give 1 value, if I do not want I will give 0 value, assigning this will be much faster. So, what we did 0 and 1, we look at the TC, FC, DW, RA, now here I slightly change a bit, reason being sometimes we give more importance to RA value. So, here I give maximum value importance to the RA value and then um, minimum importance to the temperature, you compare here. We say TC versus FC, we are giving 0 to 1, that means FC is more important. Coming to the TC, TW, here again we are saying that uh, uh, the wear is more important compared to the temperature. Uh, again, third number we say 0 and 1, we say that, uh, sorry, this is a 0 over here, not here. Uh, this 0 is, uh, the TC is a uh, uh, 0 and uh, RA is a 1 over here. So, this is more important compared to the uh, dummy naturally TC will be one more important over here. Coming to the FC versus the wear, we say compared to the force, wear is more important. Compared to the force, uh, RA is more important and then uh, FC will be more important compared to the dummy. Coming to the wear versus RA value, earlier we give a reverse order, we say wear is more important compared to the RA, but here we are giving just opposite 0, 1. And then uh, last one is a uh, wear versus this. All others are same. Digital logic, we are giving either 0 or 1. Coming to AHP, we give a more difference. We say here we give a ranking from 1 to 9. If it is a 1, that means equal importance. If we give 3, it is a moderate importance. Number 5, we give a strong importance. Number 7, very strong importance. And number 9, extreme importance. So, all odd number have been utilized. 1 it has the same importance, 3 moderate importance, 5 strong importance, 7 very strong importance, 9 extreme importance. And then we try to compare based on that what is the really the comparison difference. We say here interdependence between the factor is also being counted which is very important. Another thing is that uh, whatever the we get a variation it will be wide variation. It not be very close variation here it is something like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Now, quite possible here we get a 0 0.005, there is a possibility or here we get a 0 0.018 something like that. So, we are getting slightly more difference and we are able to segregate the cluster or material with a more uh, differences. If you look at earlier one, what we got is something very close 8.28, 8.27, so very little difference and that creates a more problem in a selection here 5.73, 5.72 is very very close or here 0 0.5.63, 0 0.5.635, so only the fourth digit we are able to differentiate and we want to make a little more difference that is why the AHP method will be more important for us and that is why we are using however it really requires a more domain knowledge, more effort that is why we say that it requires more effort and more expertise. If you do not have then again moving to digit logic will be easier and better because digit logic gives a quick results and then easier thinking. However, we know that maybe this is a stage 1 then I can go to the stage 2.
that means here and a stage one uh, absolutely bad uh, oil or non suitable oil can be removed and then if we can go with this kind of method stage two where we can get a more preferable oils in the ranking maybe say five six material um, and then after that we are utilizing so this can be the stage one i can use a rigid logic method stage two ahp method but better optimization method can be utilized for both however if we want final a model and we want to interpret the results something like i use 0.1 percent 0.2 percent 0.3 percent as a uh, i did experiment so we want to train the ann after that we want to predict what will happen in the 0.15 which we have not done that can come from ann or when we have a regression model that is very important that time this weighted object optimization will not be useful now when we uh, write uh, in the matlab code what we are you writing the comparison so first row uh, will be always like this we have four parameters we say tc versus tc is a one it is equal important because we are comparing tc versus tc now tc versus fc we say fc is a very strong important compared to the tc then comes a wear rate we say wear rate is also very strong important compared to the tc last one comes a uh, ra and that's why i say ra is uh, extremely important compared to tc so this has been done after that it will be one of the papers so here and if i compare uh, and the diagonal will be always one one and one and otherwise the comparison now we are saying that uh, here we are given one versus seven naturally it will be one by seven now we are comparing uh, fc versus uh, wear rate again we are finding both are the same uh, in the situation so we can go ahead with this uh, that's what has been shown however fc versus uh, ra i give ra is a more important compared to the tc or uh, compared to the fc then comes uh, in the last one in this case particularly in the where we are saying that uh, compared to where the ra is uh, moderately important so that's why the three has been given and here it will be a one by nine one by five one by three because we are now uh, here it was a 9, so it has to be 1 by 9. Here it was a 5, it has to be 1.5, 1 by 5. Here it was 3, so it has to be 1 by 3. So this is what we do. And after that, we try to find out what is the geometrical mean of the each column. So that has been given. And HP method also has been described in the reference paper which we have cited. So here the geometric mean comes something like a 0 0.28, uh, 2182 for the column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4. If we sum up, the sum comes something like a 5.95. Here, what we did, we calculated 1, 2, 3, 4, and we summed up that was a 10, and then we did a normalization. 1 by 10, 1 by 10 is a something like a 0.1, 2 by 10, 3 by 10, 4 by 10. While here, in this case, we are going to do 0 0.2182 divided by 5.95, then second weight will be 1.0878 divided by 5.9506 third weight will be 1.2359 divided by this sum and fourth weight will be 3.4087 divided by this sum and then that will give the weight to us now you look at here uh, tc what uh, we gave initially weighted objective method as a 0.1 here we are getting 0 0.0367 so this is much lesser coming to the 0.2 here and that's uh, fc weight here it is coming out to be 0.1828 Coming to the third where initially we give a 0.3, here it is coming 0 0.207. So this is a difference we are able to see. Coming to the 4, here the fourth number it is giving something like a 0.5728. So there is a, some sort of a separation and we can really predict the results more uh, better manner utilizing AHP. And uh, that is what we want to utilize now. For this table which we started initially, we say this table has been picked up from AS on the handbook and then uh, we are trying to optimize. Here there are 11 oils which have been given, here are 15 properties have been given and then we want to utilize the same algorithm, weighted object to optimization but plus AHP. We are not here going with a weighted objective method plus AHP, not a digit logic method. Now here you look at the, uh, the rating has been given moderate, good, poor, very good. So we can say poor means 1, moderate means uh, uh, 2, good means uh, 3, very good means uh, 4. 
and then uh, epsilon can be phi number epsilon can be given as a phi number in this situation now only these all are the correct only the cost in case a cost very high we can give one or we can go ahead with the other method so four star uh, in this case we can give a poor uh, and then uh, three stars can be given as a moderate two stars can be given as a good one star can be given as a very good so this is a possible you know, we can convert to the numbers and uh, when we you have a numbers then uh, with utilizing weighted objective method with the ahp will be easier one so that's what we are trying to utilize this method and we develop a code on this I do not want to explain the complete code here because uh, this slide in PDF format will be uh, given to you and you can really uh, explore this code. But what results we are getting from here, you can see each table uh, uh, has a column and these columns are basically the comparison of among the oils. So here in this situation, I find this oil is the best. And uh, second column again, I find that this two uh, in this column, uh, this oil is best. And this also has show the similar results. This oil is also showing the similar results. Coming to the third column, it is also giving reasonably good results, but other oils are also giving the results. So, we need to rank by utilizing the weight factor. So, this is only the rating a utility scores. When we utilize the weight factor along with that, what we get the best oil is a rank one is a sleek horn. Here, we are not given very high weight to the cost. If I give very high uh, factor to the cost, maybe slightly variation will come. And then uh, second number is a uh, olefin uh, polymer, PAO sometime we utilize. The mineral oil is going to get a seventh rank. So we are utilizing all the properties and trying to utilize the uh, weighted objective optimization with AHP. The results are there and uh, we have already code uh, have written in MATLAB code and it is already available. So, you can utilize this what we are saying the superior performance of silicone as a base soil we are able to see uh, cost uh, particularly uh, when I look at the previous the silicone has a 3 dollar sign that means it is not very good as such the best. But because of the cost factor is not giving very high weight then there is a possibility why we are able to select the uh, silicone oil. So, this is important uh, th uh, learning that now optimization completely depends what is your requirement. If the cost minimization is a first requirement, topmost requirement, quite possible may we may land up again with a mineral oil. But if the performance, high performance is the highest requirement, quite possible or extreme temperature, extreme weather conditions are important, then we may go to the slick on oil. So, there is a possibility, and then whenever uh, you require a different application, this relative ranking will change. So, I have explained all in a form so that you can utilize in a better way. We say how to optimize the lubricant selection. We say we can think about a standard performance, we can think about high performance or we can think about a specialized uh, performance. What is a standard performance? We are trying to think about the cost as the one of the major criteria. That is why they are procured through cost uh, driven agreements. And then uh, almost 75 to 80 percent mechanical component they utilize the standard performance uh, lubricant still we can also because mineral oil is not a single one mineral oil has also many many oils so we need to choose that however we need to decide first what do we want if a standard performance oil we will not go for a very high costly oils or synthetic oils we may directly go to mineral oil However, we say the biodegradability is the highest important quite possible we go for the vegetable oils or some other similar oils. Now, coming to the high performance oils which also contribute roughly the 20 percent plant applications particularly for the high friction or maybe the minimization of the friction or the high importance has been given to friction that is important for this. So, that is why we say that in this situation uh, increased wear resistance, maximizing the load support and uh, uh, giving a very high life 15 years 10 and then uh, 10 years life then this kind of uh, high performance lubricant select can be selected and uh, sometime uh, we want uh, a lubricant which should have a very good number of additives which are not readily available and maybe in a special order particularly when we have a uh, uh, good number of uh, you know, the machines 
uh, products then in this kind of oils can be utilized last one is especially uh, related to uh, performance and often we say it is a uh, basically space related or maybe the corrosive fluids and then we really require a very good lubricant or kind of the radioactive environment we really require a different kind of lubricants reason being we want them to be a uh, chemically and physically stable they should not uh, immediately uh, start getting degraded they should be non reactive to the environment and overall uh, consumption of this kind of lubricant is only 1 to 2 percent so if you want to go for the optimization or lubricant selection first you divide whether you want a standard performance you want a high performance or you want a specialized performance because in that again we can have a domain knowledge or maybe we can extract the data from a literature and after that we can select the few oils and then we can do the something of experiments once we do experiment we can develop ann model and then we can choose the right percentage of each and everything so here what we are saying like specialized performance in this case we are thinking about the handling the temperature up to 600 degree and that too in a vacuum and then uh, quite possible in uh, uh, the presence of some sort of contamination so these are the important aspects now what will happen the what are the disadvantages they will not have a normal characteristics whatever we are talking about the boundary lubricant or maybe say anti friction and all they will not have a normal lubricant so first base oil should be stable in those situation that's a more important so they will not have adequate surface protection and then another major problem comes the price here we are saying the price will be a major uh, consideration here we say price should not be considered reason being that we know already that this kind of a product will have a at least 10 times cost or to 10 to 100 times cost so price will throw this uh, kind of lubricant out so when we want to really compare we need to see which what are the really parameters which we want to optimize or we want to really select and if we know we are choosing only the environment especially related environment we define those parameter and then quite possible we keep a cost outside if we have many materials and a reasonably similar cost then we can increase and uh, incorporate the cost criteria otherwise we should not incorporate the cost criteria let me explain uh, uh, with a one case study on this what we say that this is a paper data driven modeling for the tribological performance of nano lubricant using artificial neural network ann that's a one paper available and was published in 2022 so again we have selected here lubricant with a nanoparticles that means we do not have many more materials we have selected materials or selected lubricant as with a nano powder so what they are saying reason being why we are talking about the nano lubricants reason being that there are possibilities because we have a no nanoparticles and one more thing is that now EP additives we have to discard. Now all the EP additives if they go away naturally we need to rely on a nano size particle and then we need to perform experiment to come up with the right results. So nano size particles uh, they, they need to be mixed with the base oil and then uh, this because of the, this mixing there is a possibility of decrease in the friction and wear. Uh, between the two rubbing surfaces in addition it also will increase the load carrying capacity so it will full function the ep additives it will full function the anti wear and the friction modifier so instead of going for each individual why not i go with a nanoparticle which can really give up all the results now coming to the nanoparticle why reason being they can be played with the thermal conductivity because we know the graphene has a very high thermal conductivity we can increase or decrease viscosity because recently we have done experiment with the grease by uh, putting a in graphene we found after putting graphene viscosity is decreasing so there is a decrease in the viscosity by adding the, this kind of uh, additives it can have a anti friction additives anti friction properties and anti wear properties also and then we can extract the thing from a literature and we can do also experiments on selected data and then utilize ml for uh, better outcomes now we need to figure out what are the critical parameters and here we find and particularly when we talk about the nano lubricant critical parts will be the size of the particle type of the particle and concentration of the particle what should be the concentration what kind of the, the, the shape should have what is the size of those particles so these particles are important to keep and then we need to think about some sort of methodology and then they have explained the methodology say that we want to collect the data from literature so they select some keywords something like 
tribological performance of a nano lubricant. So, data will be available to us. Effect of the nanoparticles in adding lubricant oils. And last one keyword for the friction and wear of nano lubricant. So, they did that. Now, we need to choose what will be the input features and output features. Now, they identified important input features are material composition size of the particles and the shape of the particles as input. What will be the output because ANN requires input as well as output. Input output in this case is that maximum uh, friction reduction or we say minimum friction or say maximum friction reduction percentage and they use this as output one criteria MFRP maximum wear reduction percentage MWRP as a another criteria. Now, when we are talking about the material composition or type of the nanoparticle which we are choosing, they selected diff seven different kind of a categories. They say carbon derivative particle like a graphene is a one of the particles. Now, metals, metal oxide, nano composite, rare earth composite, sulfides and other. So, other whatever the remaining they are putting in other category. Now, coming to the nano scale range. They have selected particle size from 1.5 nanometer to 250 nanometer. What are the shapes? They use a granular shape, onion shape, sheet shape, spherical and tubular. And of course, uh, concentration uh, can be considered in this various categories. Now, coming to the base oil category, they have selected the mineral oil, synthetic oil, vegetable oil and others. And addition, uh, when they are talking about the particles, so instead of only the seven, they said they can modify the surfaces also. Surface modified nanoparticle reason being it will reduce the agglomeration. So, they have thought from that angle. So, they have many categories now lubricant also in a four category then materials uh, which they are choosing in 7 plus 2 because they were thinking of surface modification. So, 7 plus 2 9 and then they were thinking about the shape again they selected a five shapes and they have used a uh, particle in a continuous range from 1.5 nanometer to 50 nanometer. Naturally, the uh, method will be much more complex. Uh, I am just showing the results directly. You can see here that this is ANN, they have used a uh, well connected uh, layer and here all are the inputs. So, they have only one hidden layer that is shallow layer and uh, of course uh, two times because in this case first time they are thinking from friction point of view, second time they think from a wear point of view. So, two separate one it is a maximum reduction in friction and maximum reduction in wear. So, in this case nothing is visible so that is why I magnified it. We say here the, uh, they are giving first value as a 1 material 1, material 2, material 3, material 4, material 5, material 6, material 7 and here also that modification in materials that how they are modifying it. Then comes uh, base oil 1, base oil 2, base oil 3, base oil 4, they are given as an input. Then coming the shape uh, and the first shape, second shape, third shape, fourth shape, five shape. So, they are giving everything as an input and then they are trying to run ANN or ANN model so that it can be giving the good results. And finally, they mention that with a different kind of uh, weightage and different kind of condition, oil selection gets changed, particle selection gets changed and sensitivity of those are very different. So, it depends on what is really requirement, we can find out the real nanoparticle and which can be utilized in different shapes or percentage because every different situation will give different results. However, we need to think if these are the so much differences, how do we go ahead with the right solution and that will be completely depending on application and that application requires a domain knowledge. That means, if you have a domain knowledge, you can utilize this method easily. If you do not have a domain knowledge, this will not be favorable, then we need to learn the domain knowledge. And earlier lecture, whatever we have covered, it is a morally on the domain knowledge. And I hope now you have sufficient domain knowledge to optimize for your purpose, which kind of lubricant will be very useful to you. With this, I say thank you for attending this lecture. Thank you.